And as for myself, I had my first start with open source in, uh, in Ruby on Rails web development. So I was working uh, as a consultant and doing uh, different web startups and whatnot. And at some point I saw a presentation at a conference that pierced the veil for me, like enabled me to, or, or instigated me into looking past you know, my own code into the, the library code, the framework code under, underlying. And from then on, I uh, have been contributing to open source. So I'm hoping to do that for some of you today. So by demonstrating this uh, practice, so you can see my Rails con contributions there. So I'm, uh, I'm a little bit religious about open source development because we're basically we're building this infrastructure for civilization, the civilization that's in the process of coming about. And every point, every project that we work on is a point of leverage. We can use them to facilitate our own work and we can uh, give leverage and facilitate others in their work. And this is, uh, it's similar to the kind of the contribution of like new scientific knowledge or new mathematical knowledge, except it's packaged in a format that can be used by someone who's not necessarily, who doesn't understand the underlying, uh, you know, science or math of it. So that's a beautiful thing. And even in that, in that context, I think Bitcoin is special because Bitcoin and, and just a few other projects have the, have the property of being, having the potential to be sort of timeless, like an obelisk that um, stands and plays an important role in society for a long time. And so we who are willing can uh, participate in maintaining that, refining it, and advancing that. And so that's you know one of the reasons I like to contribute to Bitcoin Core. So if you're interested, the question is where to start. And uh, you know naturally, people will look to pull requests. And now I have to maybe I'll mirror my screen instead, or pull it over. Let's do that. Can do that. Yeah, so uh, pull request is natural first place. And as you may have heard, um, Bitcoin is sort of review constrained. Like there's about 400 open pull requests. And there's uh, more, so there's a greater need to review the pull requests that are out there in the open than to add more to them. And so that's uh, definitely a place to start. And anyone can look at, can review pull requests that like you can just take your knowledge and look for, for flaws or opportunities and any, any change that you can consider as possibilities. You don't have to feel uh, empowered or you don't have to feel like you're passing a decisive statement on this thing. You don't have to act something or knack it, uh, but you can contribute to its refinement. So what is next? So there's also the um, Bitcoin Core uh, PR Review Club. So that's a a group of people who get together and do PR reviews on a regular basis, and it's a it's a community, and it's a, an opportunity to learn from these other folks and get their perspective and insight in the process of doing PR review. So I, I recommend that. Uh, but if you are intent on coding and making that sort of contribution, one place to start, a good place to start, would be to look at the issues. So. So there are 500, 600 open issues. And these are the nice thing about issues is that someone else has done the work of identifying an issue. And they have, um, you know, in looking at it, at least one other person thinks this is worth doing, which you don't necessarily know if you go out making a change on your own. Um, and it can point you in the direction of something that needs to be done. So particular interest is um, the good first issues label, which is here. And this is just issues that have been tagged as being more, you know, uh, easier to onboard with, like, because they're, they don't require a lot of uh, system knowledge or anything like that. And so right now there's 17 open uh, good first issues. And I thought to, uh, to uh, get going today, what we could do is take on the oldest outstanding good first issue. So that's that's one option. If so, and and I present that as uh, something for you guys to consider. Would you like to do that, or would you like to do something else related to core contribution? I think the answer is that we should do this. All right, great. So this is a uh, so this person proposed that um, that the the GUI the front end will check whether your computer has enough space 
to store the whole blockchain when it starts up and it will present a modal, it will tell you, oh no, you don't have enough space, so maybe uh, you should deal with that first before you, you know, start up the, the core wallet. And, but the, the backend does not do that, right? So, so Mark would fall comment as much, right? And so this issue has been outstanding since 2019, and there's some question over whether it should be done. Some, I think, but two people have made an attempt at solving this problem before. So first it was this guy Daraswar, this person, I should say. And um, they, this, so what happens sometimes with these pull requests is like people will give up on them or, or they'll, they'll uh, you know, their priorities will move another way. So in this case, it was, um, it was closed. Let me switch to um, mirroring my screen so that I don't have to constantly turn my head. <laughs> All right. So two people have attempted this and they haven't, neither has gone in. In this case, uh, Luke JR says maybe too much hand holding for a server. That's, that's his opinion. You know, uh, you know, people may agree, may disagree. Um, in any case, if you put, a, put forward a pull request, it's, that's, you're offering it up to the community, which they can, they can make their judgments about it. You don't have to necessarily have to know whether they'll, what, what way they'll decide about it in order to, to make a productive contribution. Similarly, here's, here's a case where someone uh, attempted to address this and, and was ultimately like, um, basically they, they misunderstood the, the underlying code and so their contribution wasn't uh, consistent with achieving the goal set out by the issue. So, but this is, you know, sometimes you'll get that feedback, right? Like this is also a learning process of like getting from not being involved in the code base to being a master of it is you have to go through a process of uh, incremental understanding. So, and I hope this person is on that path. But, um, but I think we could take a crack at it and the, um, this other, the other pull request seems like a good place to start because they're looking at the code. They're, um, they're kind of doing what you might, um, like it's, uh, it's, I would say it's grokkable. Right, like basically, in the status quo, which I think pretty much exists right now, it's like on startup, you check for the disk space, um, for the in the data dir, and then you check the disk space in the blockster, and that check disk space checks for a certain amount of space. I think it's like 500 megabytes or something, and um, or that's my understanding. And so the change just. Um, it finds out how many additional bytes are needed, which in this case comes from either the prune target of a prune node, where you know that's less than the full blockchain, or if it's not pruned, then you get the assumed blockchain size, which already exists, and it's it's a that's a value in gigabytes, and so you multiply it to make gigabytes into bytes. And so that basically is the substance of the of the issue. So the question is, can we can we uh, improve on that? Well, one thing I noticed about this change set is that there's a lock um, for CS main. So, so whenever you're locking, uh, whenever you're locking like that, you're preventing other progress from occurring in other threads and processes. So you want to make your locks as narrowly scoped as possible. And this lock is, you can ask, well, why does the, why is the lock needed at all? And I think the reason it's needed is because they're checking the, the current chain height. So if you want to know, you know, what the latest block is, you can't really get a good answer for that if block processing is going on. So you can, you can lock block processing, get the height, and then make your decision about what to do next. So, uh, so I went about making this change. 
I have another branch open with it. So I can show it on GitX here. So basically, well, the first thing I know is, is you know, I'm kind of a, um, I, I kind of, I'm kind of an optimizer at heart, so when I see things that, that um, seem somehow not optimal to me, like I'll go and try to fix them. That's kind of one of the reasons I, like, I make core contributions. But in this case, like, to me, this is an, this is an ugly thing to have uh, you know, math all over the place representing a concept. And so in, in this first commit, I just extracted all the, um, the, the, the math relative to a megabyte in bytes and into a, into a value. Whether that belongs in this PR, uh, that's an open question. It's one, uh, probably I would put it up without that change, but this is something I did uh, incidentally along the way. And then, uh, then here's another case of doing that for um, some other values. So, but I guess what we could do that would be maybe a little more interesting is to, to do this live. So, so what I have done is I've added this, this person's uh, git repo to my, to my local git instance. So I can, I can fetch, can you see that? Actually, I'll have to make it a lot larger, huh? That, feel free to you know, speak out if, you're, if anything's not clear or I need to change the display or something. So, so I'm able to fetch this person's git their, their Bitcoin uh, repo, and uh, check out this branch. And you know, I could uh, I could rebase it, for example, to bring it up to the current code, which may or may not apply cleanly. In this case, it has not. Um, so let's let's <laughs> revert that. Uh, or it's uh, so, but uh, what this can do is you know you can pull this code easily. This is more meaningful or more important if you have you know, multiple com commits that you have to interact with. So going from master, so I would just create a branch for this. I'd find this this code where it exists. So in this case, um, check this space. Let's try that again. So we are, it's not there. Yeah, so this is the this is the bit of code that is being changed in the PR that we want to to modify for this the second attempt, and in this case, like I would say, this part of the code is is very relevant to us, right? Like they've evaluated some of the cases, like when you should run this check and when you shouldn't, and uh, that applies also in this in in this case. So we could apply that you know, directly. And then here's another value that's important. So basically, it's all about building up this extra argument to check the disk space. And now, how are we going to deal with this uh, chain height situation? So part of the deal, I mean, this the code that this is referring to is two years old. So there's newer some newer practices in place, and I've already looked into them over here. And so now you, in this part of the code, you have a, a chain manager object. And it has a, val it has a method called active height. So if you look at the active height method, how it's defined, it just tells you that the, um, the active height of the chain manager is the active chain's height simple enough. 
and you have access to the chain manager here through the node, I believe. So node.chainman, I think is what I would expect. Excuse me. So this is the, the object responsible for managing the chain. And you can refer to it here because it's already present. So let's see. So we've got this concept, this idea of like a node, no, node.chainman dot active height. So that would um, that should get us this value. Um, but we also want to lock and, and lock narrowly, I would say. And so um, you can use this macro called with lock. And so that will lock and bring that together. And then of course you'll need to assign that value, which is the height, to some variable. And then you will have to define that variable. Maybe even, yeah, so you'll need to define that variable. And then you'll compare it in, the, uh, in this section here. Right, so this is kind of, now we've incrementally updated this pull request by changing the way it's locking, by changing the way it's accessing the height, and, but otherwise it's you know, sort of in progress. We can ask, are there other things we can do to improve this code? And one thing I, I notice is that, well, if you're not re-indexing, it says, you know, if not re-index and height is less than negative one, well, if you're not re-indexing, then you don't actually need the height because it's, you know, it's irrelevant to the question. So it would be better to access it you know, internally. And so that means basically only run this code if necessary. And then once you have that, okay, we have to keep the uh, additional bytes needed outside so that it's in scope for the eventual call to check disk space. Hold on, I feel like I'm missing, I guess I lost the uh, argument here. But, um, so now we're re-indexing, and then we get the, the value of the height, and then we can check if the height is less than or equal to one, because here we're only checking this kind of the first time you're running this code. When, you're, when you start up your, your first um, wallet or node. So, so that's you know, closer, I would say, to being ideal. And then what's left, I mean, I, there was, there's one other aesthetic thing, which I think, you know, I'm into aesthetics. I think aesthetics are actually important to, you know, to code. Um, but uh, basically, I think it's more readable and we should strive for readability if it's represented this way, in my opinion. So that's uh, using a ternary. So you say, basically, additional bytes needed is if the prune mode, if it's fprune mode, the inprune target, otherwise this value. Can we put the, the first, first, or I guess the second statement in the ternary on the second line? So inprune node. Like the inprune target there? Yeah, yeah, like that. Like that? I think that, that's a little nicer. It's, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's opinions. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, all the maintainers and reviewers will have opinions as well. I would call that a, a nit, that's an important yeah. distinction. Which is that, like, some, you know, I, I offer nits all the time. I'm, like, all for them. But um, the, the nice thing about nits, or, like, the thing you acknowledge with a nit is that it's up to the, it's a subjective perspective. It's up to the individual as to whether they pick that up and incorporate that. So in this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to decline. <laughs> but, uh, but no worries. Um, this is a collaborative exercise. And uh, anyway, so this is basically, I think, what we've arrived at here. How about the 24 or 10 24 shouldn't be constant for those? Yeah, you know, I, I we we could. I, I was thinking not to do that because of um, because of the idea of basically making the the change set minimal, right? Like one of the one of the nice things about um, contributing to a code base, you can it's a, it's better to have smaller but more focused PRs so that uh, the the aspects that are being evaluated are narrowly defined and you have you don't. Uh, you can have things get mired in, in difficulty if you're doing like many things at once. Um, 
although this is new, this is something we're introducing, so maybe it's there's a maybe there's a representation of, of gigabytes somewhere in the uh, in the code base that we should be using. I actually looked earlier and I found that one does exist, but it exists in the uh, let me just uh, do that. I think there's there's a constant in the front end code, which is oh yeah, it's like it's called GB bytes. I think there it is. Yeah, so we have one in the GUI constants file, which would be useful in this case, uh, but it's not accessible to us at this other in this like lower level code. So that's. You know, it's kind of an open question, like should that be moved? Should you make it available or should you introduce a new thing to, to do that? And I guess I would, it's a, it's a good question, but I would punt on it, I guess, and maybe put it up for review and, or raise it, maybe have a conversation with someone about it. Um, well, that do you guys have a, also different. Yeah, so this is, <laughs> that's <laughs> relevant, right? So this is, do you guys know the difference between this value and this other value? Right, obviously they're producing different numbers. Um, this one is a is a gigabyte, and this is one is a gigabyte. So, <laughs> giga, you know, is powers of ten in the in the metric system, and whereas you know, giga in our historical representation in, in computers is uh, powers of two. So here we can. So someone came up with a new nomenclature, which is based on powers of two, and it's like megabyte. Give, give a byte, some things like that, and yeah. So and actually, actually, it's used quite a lot. Like people make that distinction in the code base. So they'll use MIB or GIB as to say stand for the gigab gigabyte or met megabyte or whatever. All right. So, but I would I would kind of punt on that and say, well, let's you know let's give that a try. And so the next thing is, so you've made this change. And you can check it out and ponder its, uh, its efficacy. Looks good to me. Um, and it's, it's about equivalent to what this person was doing, uh, if we go back to the original pull request. I mean, they're, it's, they implement it differently, but it has the same, it should have about the same effect. And so what we can do next is uh, make the code base. And this is one of the reasons um, well, this is when you know the code is obviously compiled and you know made available to run as a binary, and it's a great way. Like many of the errors that can exist in the code will be exposed through compilation failures, and of course there's tests as well. I was going to ask, would you write any tests for this specific thing? Where yes, that? I would. I don't know if we'll do that today. It depends on time, I suppose. Um, I guess we have time. So. Yeah, so that's interesting. We can, I guess there's some existing tests. While that's building, we can look for what are the existing tests for this um, for this function, and where are I don't know how the the co how the disk space is simulated in the test. I don't know if it is. So let's find out. So this is app init main, and. So I don't really see anything there. So I don't know if often there will be existing tests that you can easily kind of elaborate on. And but in this case I think not because maybe relating to disk space uh, the underlying uh, Functions you're relying on and the system system feedback. I don't think it's easy to stub out, perhaps, but I may be wrong about that. So, does anyone know this? The answer to this? No. Right. What's that? I'm guessing there's not tested. Yeah, I'm guessing it's not tested all either. Yeah. So th that would be another thing. Oh, look, we found uh, a compilation failure. Uh, there we go. So, of course, this is natural to development. Um, and, right, I think that's everything. For 
earlier when you mentioned it, um, I'm not sure we're going to get into this, but like each PR needs to be hacked by a bunch of people, and addressing this sometimes slows that down. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah, well, um, I think, I, well, my philosophy is basically that everyone should be, feel free to speak, and like you shouldn't self-censor, because you may be, even if you have a, you might have a, you might see something that makes you uneasy, and that uneasiness may be an intuitive sense about a real problem that exists in the, in the code. And uh, so I'm, I'm in favor of communication generally. Uh, I don't think, as the person who's making the pull request, you don't have an obligation to act on any comment that's that's made. You just, it's, you know, it's uh, it's uh, you know, it's up to you whether you want to rebase, whether you want to modify your code. So I would, um, some, you know, sometimes I just tell people, you know, thanks for the feedback. And, you know, basically, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, I guess what I'm, I'm thinking more is that um, there seems to be a culture of, of not responding to this because it, it, otherwise every person who act has to react. When you commit, yeah, and, and uh, uh, cat herding is sometimes slow, and, and people just want to get stuff in, and that maybe fosters like poor code ID because, because of that. Yeah, that's, I mean that could be a problem. I, in my experience, you know, there tend to be plenty of other reasons you need to invalidate acts, which is like rebasing and. Yeah, uh, so you might as well. Do yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm for making your code as good as you can, and you know, trying to. Basically, like I think we should be striving for perfection, uh, according to whatever judgment we can make, and um, that's that's what I try to do. But um, the in this case, like I don't really I won't really know this works until I test it. Like um, as was said, and to test it, I would need uh, you know a device with a limited drive, and that would be kind of a hassle. I don't have that available currently. So it's going to be difficult to test. Now, that said, we could open it as a pull request untested and just say, here's a thing that does this thing. I haven't tested it. And maybe that would be a good invocation for a reviewer to test it, because you know, other people should be testing it anyway um, to, make, you know, to evaluate the change fully. And I, you know, I, I will tend to things that I can test or things that I can personally verify? What's up? So um, going you know, a level higher than the NITs, NITs are you know, dealer's choice, I guess. But for NACs, what is the, uh, there's a bit of a tension there, right? Where you could have, you, you want to say like, OK, well, let's not merge anything in that has any NACs, right? Like a NAC is a big deal. But at the same time, that can introduce uh, like a very low uh, threshold for um, like rejecting changes that might be important, mm -hmm. and I don't know. Like, what do you see with the tension there? Because that, that apparently that happened recently, where there was a PR that went up, there was a NAC, and actually there was a NAC on, on one of the earlier versions of this that you that you showed, and then it was closed. But in this case, there was a NAC and it still went in, mm -hmm. um, and so. Yeah, I don't know, like how does that impact, and I, I could also see that impacting, especially if you're newer, and I don't know if you ran into this in your early kind of days of, of submitting uh, changes, but that could be kind of demoralizing as well. Um, yeah, well, I think you have to, um, well, first of all, like, when we're talking about opinions fundamentally, it's like someone says, oh, yeah. this is bad for Bitcoin, or this is, you know, and the maintainers have to make a judgment, and they're informed by the perspectives of the people who review the code as well. But um, and they'll you know they will have some they will have their own evaluation and then they'll have the evalu their like impression of the people who are who are reviewing. Otherwise, they'll have their you know the arguments that the person makes. They'll evaluate those arguments. And I think um, I like I I tend I think stoicism is a good approach in general with with these kinds of changes because there are concerns other than or perspectives other than your own that are at play. And so I just will say. You know, it's basically it's up to the maintainers. I'm just going to try to, uh, you know, sometimes I'll I'm, I I will close pull requests if with with the NAC. I don't know that I don't know that I've seen many of them. I think I, I may I may never have seen a NAC on my changes, but um, but I tend to do th things that are relatively that I don't think are terribly c controversial. You know, I'm not trying to uh, you know introvert, introduce more opcodes or anything.
I mean, th this NAC was just on this small optimization. Yeah, right? okay, so this then we could, we can re review it ourselves, right? So, um, so Luke says, this is too much hand holding for a server. Now, maybe, um, maybe he's right. You know, there's like there's some reason to say like, well, someone who's running this server code can can figure that out for themselves. They can see the error that occurs later. And so maybe what if we take that into account, maybe the best path would be to do what like um, I think Marco commented earlier or in the in the issue. If I can bring it up. Um, He's saying, I guess it could print a warning or an error. So, like, if we're say, if we're printing a warning, then all it is is information. So, it's um, I think that would be maybe that's the appropriate way to satisfy the different concerns. But um, in this case, you know, right now it's an, it's an error. I, I would argue probably should be an error, in my opinion. I, I, I don't, that's because if you're if you're going to error out from disk space anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. Fail fast. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's another option is like you can have a an option to circumvent this kind of check, and that that would be possible. But um, those kinds of you know the reviewers can call for those. Or I mean, what about in the case where somebody might want to run it? Like I, this has happened to me, right? I wanted to run it twice, and whatever you know blocks I pulled down in the first run, I didn't have enough disk space, but I wanted all those too. And then I would move them over when I read it the second time. Does that make sense? Like I, I don't really follow. No. So I had, I, I don't know, I guess the, what really happened was I had an old node and it had like 80% of the blocks and it hit, you know, we, we're now five months down the road, there's a whole bunch more blocks, uh -huh. right? I wanted to be able, in that case, I just grabbed, you know, stored them into the database and ran it and they top back up and that was the problem. But what if you wanted to, like, not error out, you know what I mean? Like, you don't yeah, want okay, to so error the, out. So, the question default. is like, okay, maybe. Um, so, th that gets to a question about like the what is the active height actually? Like, does the prior to this happening, is there, does the node load that which is already on the disk? And I would expect that it would. Um, so, then in that case, if it's, if it's looking at this folder that has the blocks already downloaded, then it's taking that into account. So, by the time it gets here, the height is already. You know, over one, so this check wouldn't be applied. But maybe there are other cases, like someone else mentioned. Let's see. Okay, well, here's a good example. Say right. you're using the Blockstream satellite, right? And I heard it was like what a month to get all the blocks using the satellite. But you can do it. And so, but you don't have enough disk space now. But you want to start. Ah. Right. That's interesting. And then you're going to fill in the disk space later. You're ordering it's coming on Amazon in a few days. Right? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> like, okay, so again, the the warning could be a could could right. suit that. So that's a, that sounds like a good that could be. <coughs> so in that case, you might want to do like a, first do the check of the disk space without the additional bytes and error there that retains the existing behavior, and then afterwards check it with the additional bytes, and instead of an init error, maybe there's a. a some kind of warning. In a warning. So. There you go. So this is kind of, we've iterated in the direction of accommodating all these this feedback from the existing PR. So that's a beautiful thing about the history being recorded and, and referenced in this way. And now, now we can say, okay, we have this, I, I hope, more elegant way of doing this feature, you know, without causing trouble for the special cases like you talk about. That is a very special case. There you go. Good question. Oh yeah, what's up? Uh, uh, <coughs> I guess I kind of have two questions. One is, um, do you actually develop in Atom when you're like doing pull requests, or is it just for the presentation? Uh, no, I develop in Atom. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Do you like I've. When I've tried to kind of dig into these massive code bases, um, I feel like that's kind of hard. And uh, do you have any? Rec is that like your recommendation? I think Adam's actually getting some. Yeah, I just saw that today. Yeah. Um, like any cool tips for like people that are like have no idea about the code base? Like even just like finding methods and stuff. It seems like you can't, kind of can't do that in Adam. And yeah, it's not. Um, 
it's not straightforward, right? It doesn't index the code for you to, to click through and all that. I just like searching and like Yeah, you know, I'll use I use regular expressions a lot. So okay. like, you know, things like this, it's less likely to be in other other representations. So there there's that. Um, I so I do a lot of like searching across the yeah, 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 just, just searching and stuff, yeah. Cool. Um, I guess my other question was, like, just kind of on a meta level when I was just thinking about this, um, it seems like the only kind of significant change you made was, like, this locking code, maybe, and, like, a little bit of an well, optimization. The, the warning. Yeah, the no warning, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah, the optimization. Like, yeah. I guess, how did you go from just, like, the comment to that? You know, like, did you interpret that comment, like, too much hand-holding to equate to... Or is that is that related to the locking code, or is that just something separate and like it's your interpretation? Yeah. So uh, too much hand holding. That says to me, well, we don't want to we don't want to constrain the choice of the of the person running the code in the server. Got it. And that's um, that would be my sense of it at least. Got it. And and that then the locking code is kind of separate because you're like, oh, it, it, this, yeah. this optimization should exist. I guess you you commented that too, right there. So. Yeah. To me, it's just it's just kind of like when I I mean no like all respect to it's like everyone's got I'm, I'm gonna express an opinion which is like I don't think this is beautiful, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, because you shouldn't be like accessing the file system to check the disk space while something is locked got for it. another reason. Because you know it's just um, it's not uh, elegant. To me, that's that's the most important change. Of the <laughs> anyway, I just want to say you can compile faster if you have multiple ways to do. Oh yeah, totally. Good point. Let's do that. It's like, is it N or J? J. So, thank you. Uh, you have you have a couple places where you're, you're logging an error, but you're actually doing a warning, right? Oh yeah, it says error disk space is low for. Okay, so let's say let's yeah. What, what do you mean the other cases? Uh, there yeah, there's only the, there's three places where it logs something. Um, the disk space is low, but one of them is more. Did you block files like that? Um, <coughs> sorry, where do you see that? One of them is a warning. Uh, no, no, you only have the one warning, but, um, but yeah, you have, what's, these two are, are duplicated? Yeah, no, so this one's checking the data dir. Oh. This one's checking the blocks dir. Got it. And then the messages are the same, but they take the path, they, they take it. the string of the path, so it'll show up as that. And so another, you know, something that might be helpful is we could include the, amount of space that we're expecting to need in this warning message. Mm -hmm. um, that could be helpful, like if we, if we um, took the additional bytes needed. Um, maybe then we would look into check disk space and find out kind of how it's, um, find out how it's, how it's looking into the disk space. Now my building is interfering with my searching. <laughs> <laughs> You care about code comments? Sure. Just thinking about like you know this use case for for having a warning and setting an error, where before you, you you've already tried to error twice. Somebody coming back, reading this later, reading this in PR, and noticing that it's a warning, and just like sort of intervening on that and saying like Look, don't do any bullshit because I know that this is a warning. But but why on earth would you would you think of of this case, which I think is a really good one? of wanting to download all the blocks. You know, perhaps the user wants to download all the blocks. And if there could be a commentary to help explain why that decision is being made to warn instead. Yeah, I mean, it's... It may not be necessary. I think, yeah, I think it's clear and not, although like, okay, so this is, you know. Can I add something to that? Like, there's sometimes a distinction between when something makes sense as a comment in the code versus a comment on a PR. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that, this is like an example of that. Like, yeah, when you're just analyzing the PR, like why did you do this, that's informative. Sometimes when I put up PRs, even not in open source stuff, you know, I'll help, 
give reviewers context and then but sometimes I've had feedback they're like hey why don't you just put this in the code because this is going to be helpful in the future I, um, I tend to defer to that like and it's my own style or whatever but like I tend to defer to like over commenting yeah in, in code bases but you know, small change sets. There's there's reasons not to. You know, you don't need to have like a whole shit ass ton of things to read about. They're yeah. Hard to maintain it, that changes later. Yeah. The best possible outcome I think is when the code as executable is also readable, and you, it's clear from looking at it what makes sense. Although sometimes like higher level uh, actions, you know, you have to explain the context. In this case, I feel like the you know the code, the the purpose of the code is pretty clear. It's saying you know here are these conditions we're not tolerating, this other condition we're concerned about. And so the, the only thing that's, that's perhaps confusing to me is like, why are we excluding in the case of re-index and the, and the height? Um, there are also, right, like the, if I'm trying to make sense of this code, and I, I can also look at the, the commits that introduce them to the code base, and I do that fairly often, like to blame on the file and then Look at the the shot of the commit. Um, that's another source of information. It's there's a, editors too that will like, like inline it, it, yeah, yeah inline. insert an inline. So it's basically like it's commenting the code. So if you put that in the commit, right, like add warning in case, like you know, and then you would see that when you're scrolling through. So here's a fun other other incidental thing you can do in a case like this where this guy has. Um, Done some effort, and I want to acknowledge that because, like, I appreciate the effort that he's done, and like how you know, uh, certainly I relied on it to do this. So, what I can do is include reference him in the in the commit, and then it'll also be attributed to them. Yeah, I didn't see when you started this um, branch. Did you did you start from the PR branch, or did you start a new branch and then? I started a new branch because I was, first I tried to rebase onto master and there wasn't a, there wasn't a clean rebase and it was probably, it was gonna be faster to just do something fresh. And uh, let's see what I did here. Oh, I haven't committed this yet. So it's my, it's just uh, the diff on me. It's just here waiting to be committed. Um, so we can write that commit now. Seems like it'll build, you know, it's pretty far along. Um, Did you add anything? Did I add anything? Yeah, is there anything staged? Any, uh, Are there staged changes? I have not, but the dash A flag is oh, for yeah. adds, adds uh, everything. And then, so you can say add warning to startup. Um, add to, you know, I don't know, we can refer even to their commit message. Add check for free disk space. Startup. Fair enough. And here you can see it's a very collaborative effort, right? Like we're relying on one another to make things happen. And I did also this um, this other thing, co-authored by. So this is what I was, was talking about here. And then. Let's clarify that it's a warning. So now we have a commit, and it has built successfully. Like a, another thing we can do is make check, which runs the test. We can also run the, um, we can run the, our modified Bitcoin client on our own and see that it starts up successfully. We, we can, in theory, simulate this case of having you know just not not enough disk space, maybe by running it on another computer or, or uh, you know 
some other way. Um, that is, you know, if I'm inclined to open this pull request here today, so I hope you'll forgive me if I don't do that. Um, are there any other suggestions about how to improve this, this pull request? I was going to say, um, is it worth maybe adding like a variable to describe what 1,024 times 1,024 times 1,024 is? Yeah. Just because like there's so much discussion, and it's just, I think that's a really good idea. And yeah, so you can pull it out into a, a constant yeah. answer. Yeah. The other thing I could do is I could cite everyone here as my <laughs> office. I'm, in, I'm inclined to do that if you guys want to do that. Let's super into it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Um, so I, uh, here I modified all the megabytes. And one of the problems I have with this constant is I don't know where to put it. Well, what about just in that yeah. file? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough, yeah. Let's see if there's anything else in this file of that sort. Because this it. is like a separate PR that one of us could probably do, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, I mean, we can make this change. I think that's fair enough. So we have just two, kind of two cases here. It's not really, it's only done in the front end, basically, so I'm, I'm a little nervous about it, but that's fine. Um, so we call this a, I guess a static const expression, which is the uh, size t of the, so there's the, um, the mb bytes. Now one, another challenge is the, um, another challenge is there's already gb bytes in another file and we don't want to conflict in it if we can avoid it. Um, so maybe we can, we could put it in a namespace. I was thinking of um, like disk or something like that, or fs. There are, there are some file system, there is an fs namespace elsewhere, but I guess we could just leave it as is and see how that goes. We'll call it, I know it, we'll call it mid bytes and give bytes as we were talking about. So now that we have these values, we can substitute them in. All right. So this is a refactor of extracting. on when a commit should be on its own versus just amend the change to the previous one? Well, there's the uh, code base or the docs offer some advice on this front, which is, this is actually a great resource. Um, looking into the, in the doc folder, there are, I think it's either developer notes or contributing. Let's look at developer notes. So they have some thoughts on refactoring. Yeah, contributing to MD at the top level. Basically says, refactoring is a necessary part of any SARP project evolution. The following guidelines are refactoring pull requests for the project. It talks about different types of refactoring and basically it says, or maybe here or in some other part it says, generally don't combine these two uh, operations like changing things, like changing behavior and changing the arrangement of the code can be distinct to make it easier to evaluate both sets. And that's the case here. Yeah, because you're touching other parts of the code that don't necessarily. Yeah, and you see a line, it's like, okay, is that change, is that a, a change that doesn't influence the behavior, or does it, does it influence behavior, I don't know. Um, and that is given that um, Bitcoin Core is review constrained, that's another thing you can do to help the processes by making things as easy to comprehend as possible, as easy to evaluate you know, with, some, with uh, focused commits and that kind of thing. So while we've been talking, the tests continue to run. I'm, 
Let's see. So, I'm, I'm interested, I'm like, if you guys want to do this thing of um, adding yourselves to the co-authors, then I'm, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> anyway. Um, otherwise, I'll open this pull request. Yeah, all right, let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. All right. <laughs> so, how are we gonna how are we gonna get your emails and all that? Let's, uh, so we have a room. There's a telegram. Yeah, yeah room telegram. telegram. Room. Let's do it. You guys want to post your GitHub ID in there? We, I need your like name and email address. Your GitHub email address, basically. Should it be in like a specific format so you can just easily? Yeah, message? it's like name space angle bracket email closing angle bracket. Separate telegrams just for this room. Yeah, yeah it's it's noted in the, the first the main telegram room. There's a link you can just click on. It. Uh, yeah. This is is it Jacob using yeah, the room? Jacob. Yeah, it's the it's the pinned message in BTC plus plus. How did you get into this telegram? The BTC plus plus one. Yeah. Uh, I think it was in an email or something. Message and it's going up a yeah, your reputations are at stake. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you want the, the email address and the username? Is that what yes, it the uses like, and you, I mean, you could just have an email address, but yeah. generally so it's like the username, the email, right. 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 yeah. So the way. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's not even username. There's no it's, name. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the first part is like free text, like a name, and then the other one in brackets is an email address. And the email address is how GitHub associates with with an account. You mean Microsoft? Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that ex I mean that also explains the sunsetting with Adam. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. From, that's coming from the .NET developer. So I can show. How, well, so we can do an interactive rebase of this branch. Oh, here we go. Onto master. And uh, we'll reword both of these commits. This just has us change the commit message for each. And I'll add your names here. Unfortunately, maybe I'll do it in Adam first because it's maybe a little easier. Should some of us stay reviewers so we can back? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, it, it will be apparent that you were on the commit as well, so you've been found out. <laughs> All right, this will take a minute. I guess I can just do one at a time here. So to catch you up, we're um, adding everyone to these commits that we're opening a pull request for. So if you want to, if you want to have your credentials on there, you can, uh, you can do that. You'll get credit for the for the commit if it's ever merged into a core. Oh sure. You'll just have to send it to the Telegram group for this group. So, uh, <laughs> soft hold, should I um, add your name or your handle there? 
Uh, just, yeah, my name is fine. Okay. All right, the last few here. And now you all can uh, follow this pull request as it uh, makes its way through the development process. And maybe down the road we can celebrate its inclusion in the core. All right, is that everybody? I'll be back here in two years. Are you able to grab from Signal? Uh, yeah, let's do that. That's pretty, that's pretty optimistic. Yeah. Well, you know, some things, some things uh, get added quickly and some things you know, we'll languish, but that's just... Percentage-wise, what would you say those seven things are? Well, we, we have better, um, a higher likelihood than usual because we're responding to an issue that's out, out for consideration. And we're taking into account all the things that have already been said about the prior pull requests. We're using, you know, the, the prior learnings. So I think it could be, um, it could be fine. I'm, I'm, I would be relatively <laughs> optimistic. I think we need to put some money on it. <laughs> All right, anyone else? I think we've got uh, 15 currently. I think I've got everybody, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. I think this is cool. Just now there'll be evidence of a class taught on Bitcoin. That's right. <laughs> and if any of us continue contributing, this will be. Uh, the class that brought us to the party. Yeah. Yeah. Just sure. created an Anon, uh, Anon GitHub for this very occasion. So, we're just adding us to that. We're in time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a collaborative effort. All right. So, we have our branch, we, we have our notions, and we are ready to publish it. So push this. So. And one of the first thing, well, once you open a pull request, the, um, the, all the test suites will be run against them. So there's continuous integration. And they'll build the project under different environments with different options. Uh, enabled and that sort of thing, and so you know those will those can give you information if something's not working, um, or they can you know help increase your confidence that it is working. Um, so let's reference the issue. So revive this um, reworks revives that pull request we referenced, which is fifteen eight forty eight to add a uh, check for this space. Feel free to you know, help me with my wordsmithing. Um, You're killing it. Let's say there's the issue as well. And then we can make a note about the uh, the constant situation. Um, Was there someone missing from the, the second commit? 
What's that? That's Antoine. Ah. Yeah. So you can see there, you know, the, here's the confirmation that we're all included in this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, we can also say this uh, this PR was fashioned by a team of developers at the um, Bitcoin Plus Plus conference. See if we can link to the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, I've got it over here. ATC plus plus stuff. So um, I want to make a note about the constants because it is, this is the kind of thing that it could be applied more generally, it could be um, removed entirely, and we can just say, well, we just did it for this file because you know, we were being modest in our, uh, in our edits, but it could be applied more, um, more generally. Guess that's fine. Yeah, let's do it. So, congrats! You've now uh, submitted. It. And we've uh, we've achieved our mission. We've contributed to Bitcoin Core. Now, we'll see whether it gets uh, merged down the road. Um, I'll I'll uh, keep an eye on this, and I welcome you guys all to also. Um, I don't respond if there are. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's that. Is there anything else you guys would like to go over? Let's go get Andrew and Ray to it. I don't know. Let's give us some time. <laughs> the Bitcoin Core it, reviews sessions that you mentioned earlier. Is that um, just picking up you know, the open items for reviews and going through them? Yeah, so they how have. How friendly is it? It is definitely noob friendly. It's it's intended to help invite people to participate, and they have a schedule. They pick one uh, one PR each meeting, and they meet once a week, and uh, they will go and review it, and they'll make notes and raise questions. And it's a uh, it's a very collaborative experience. Here, they, you can even look over the the log. It all occurs on uh, on IRC. You know. Yeah, definitely. And remember, like it's it's you know it, it can be intimidating to work with a code base like this, but everyone everyone has to go through this process of you know going from knowing nothing to knowing more. So I invite you to um, get into it. All right. Now, did anyone else? Did anyone have a problem like running like building Bitcoin Core or anything like that? Maybe we could address those kinds of problems. I know one person mentioned that. Anyone else? No? All right, well, I guess we'll call this meeting complete. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.